What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Today, <laughs> we are reacting to part three, Blink of an Eye. Me and Kyle back at it again. Um, I hope y'all are enjoying the reactions. We've been killing it. Y'all been killing it. Uh, welcome to everyone that's new. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for all the love and support. Original video link will be down in the description. Kyle, say hi real fast. Yo, what up? See, there hi. we go. You, anything you want to say to the peoples? Um... Go go chase, go chase. <laughs> Let's get into the video. That's about it. A very strange event happened. It was probably '93. Dale called me and he said, "I just got this yacht. We're gonna have it down to the Bahamas in June." He said, uh, "I want you to go." I thought that was That's like nice winning the lottery, and it was. Yeah. And uh, he goes, "Yeah, Michael's going too." I'm like, Michael who? And he goes, Michael Waltrip. And I was like, okay. This is this most strange combination of three people. And so that's where I saw the relationship with Michael and Dale start. You guys oh will be surprised. <laughs> Sunday money. Yeah, all that money went on Sunday. This is Sunday money, and this is our dining room. This is where Michael Walker said. Right there. <laughs> that play right there. Walker said. Mm -hmm. This is where Ty Norris sits. This is where Blue Blue sits. That's right. Where Teresa Diana Norris sits. This is where Ralph Dale sits. Ralph Dale. Ralph Dale. Taylor, uh -huh. eats, Taylor eats downstairs in the bed, watches the watch movie. Probably so. Okay, and here's Michael now. Yeah. Turn it over. I'd like to add to that. Uh, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> he low key seems awkward a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie. He's goofy. Like Dale always brought out the best. He just loves fun. fun. You know, I feel that. Made him happy. Hey, Mike, you gotta get some of these right here. I ain't got these, my bare shorts. Yeah. Your what shorts? Nah, no, these ain't them. Well, here they are. Here they are. Bare shorts. A lot of people think Michael's happy all the time. There he is fishing. He could put on a good act, but Dale truly made him happy as a friend. That does look like a Dad fun and friendship. Michael's relationship Niggas out here building the same castles together. There's an age difference there. <laughs> Dad and Daryl were, you know, fierce competitors. They were friends, but at the same time, they were competitive on and off the track in life, you know. And dad was hanging out with his bro brother, who was much younger, and I just didn't see dad and Michael being compatible as far as having, being, having a friendship. It just, uh... I think Dale loved Michael's fun-loving character. And when he went to the Bahamas, he just wanted to have fun. And, um, and, but it turned into more than just a guy you're racing on the racetrack, more than just Daryl Waltrip's brother. They became friends. I know Dale paid attention to everything Michael did, and I just think that uh, Dale always believed more in Michael, probably than Michael even believed in himself. I think Dad saw, or, or was curious even, as to what Michael could do in a really, really good car. The common theme, you know, when we were sitting on the back of the boat or, or riding around the farm was, was you would, you'd win in one of my cars. And he would say that a lot. I put you in one of my cars, you'd win. And then he did. And um, I think that, <laughs> and then he I think that they'll did. believe that I was a good driver, but I hadn't done a very good job of managing my career. I mean, years and years later, but that, yeah. That kept me going. That kept me Still inspired. <clears throat> yeah. Mainly because I knew that one of the best ever. Did spoiler alert. Believed. Spoiler alert. <laughs> And my desire was burning more than you can imagine just to, to get out there in a, in a car and, and went on Sunday. That's all I could think about. That is Michael Waltrip out of control. Jeez. Try oval into a series of sidewinders. Yeah. Nine shattering snap rolls. Oh. 
Michael Waltrip. Waltrip is a little upset yeah, here. Michael little... Waltrip went over and had but words and made Lake me speed. more with car number nine. Oh, did, the, did the punch hurt? Anybody find that out? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, man. Ah! And it brought he was defeated. Like, actually defeated. Could you imagine, though? Just. There's so many. It's the magic number. I could not imagine. His winless streak was definitely, uh, um, I mean, I tried to ignore it. It was, it's, it was painful to watch. I, I tried to just be as positive as I could every week. Um, forget about last week, you know, let's, let's move on to this week. But you know, I never lost confidence in him. And, and there's a lot of drivers that you know, they eventually disappear because they don't ever perform well enough in whatever teams they drive for. And then they just kind of, you know, eventually go away. You know, for Michael, I mean, that man is a survivor. I don't know. And he is a survivor. You want to know why? why? I'm over here literally just thinking in my head. And I know this is going to sound so dumb. That's like going 462 losses and zero wins. It was 462, right? Yeah. 462 losses, zero wins. That is like me playing Call of Duty 1v1 and losing 462 times in a row, never winning one, and then me not being like, I don't suck at the game. He literally, yeah. at one point, like, he didn't give up on himself. I would have been gave up. I, I, after fucking 100 losses, I would have been gone. I, thi I think it's because it's a little bit different when it comes, like, he didn't finish 40. Well, at that time, there was, like, 43 cars, depending on what area you're driving, different mm -hmm. amount of cars in. But he didn't finish, like, dead last every time, you know? Well, I so know I think that. that's kind of the thing that, like, you know, just because he didn't win in 462 starts doesn't mean he didn't finish second or third or fourth you know like he, he he wasn't as bad as people thought but like that the fact that he never won like really it's the fact that he never gave up yeah like because it's like kind of the same situation that um matt de benedetto's in now where he he's driving for one of the most famous race teams in nascar the wood brothers mm -hmm. and he finally has equipment to get himself a win everybody's rooting for him and we're just kind of like at that point where we're just waiting for him to get a win he's came close finished second a few times you know had good top five runs now we're hey. just kind of waiting for him to to get that win that one win gonna come and it's gonna surprise everybody they, they, oh, he, he won't i don't know i don't know a single person that hates matt benedetto like that dude is just everyone loves him if you don't like him something's wrong with you i'm gonna have to i'm gonna keep, have to keep an eye out for him then for sure no you know, anytime things don't go right, you look back and try to figure out how you could fix them. And I think, I think I just, I just look back and think, I don't think I was bold enough or, or confident enough to, to, to take a chance. When I watched some kids my age get a better ride than me, how do you, you know, what do you do? You quit your job and hope for a better one. I just feel like if I had, a, feel like if I had taken a chance, it might have paid off. You know, that something would come along better than, than what I had. Michael had was talking to a couple different car owners and options. I didn't want to settle. I didn't want to just sign it to be racing. Did that a couple times early in my career where I signed again, just, just to know I had a job. In the summer of 2000, we, at the time, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated had three teams, but two were in cup and one were, was in the, in, the, in the lower series. And Dale said, I'm only going to race in cup. And I was like, well, that means you have to have a third cup car. And he goes, yeah. He said, let's go to Napa and see if Napa would come up with us and go cup racing. And I looked at him, I said, well, who would you have drive it? And he goes, Michael. We're going to put Michael on. He goes, call Michael right now and see if he's available. And when it comes to to late August, September of, of, of a season, 
plans are pretty much set for the following year. And so my, my holding out hope was uh, about to, to run its course. So I called Michael and I said, hey, I know this is kind of a strange question. I said, but have you signed your contract yet? I didn't sign it. We were like, don't sign it. Hmm, maybe something's gonna That's work out. That's that luck coming around. So we go in, we sit down. Dale and I sat down with the Napa folks. And Dale said, I don't wanna do bush races anymore. I wanna go cup racing and I don't need to hire a cup driver. And he goes, well, how much money do you need? And he said, I tell them. And I was like, uh, nine million. And they were like, okay, so they wrote That's it down. That's a lot of fucking money. And he yeah. said, uh, who would you, like, you can't just say nine million, million and be like, oh, okay. I I I'll never forget it. And Dale looked it's a lot of money to sponsor a season. And I look back at him, and Dale finally says, I'm going to put Michael Waltrip in that car because I think he can win. And they, it was like a split second hesitation. And I'm like, and, the, and Bob McKenna goes, Do you really think you can get him to drive for us? <laughs> I was with my mom. She was driving, and she and my phone rang, and it was Dale. And he was like, you know, where's Michael? I was like, well, I, I don't know. I guess he's, you know, at the house or at the office. I, I, don't, I don't know. The phone rang, and Dale said, get over here. And I said, what do you need? He said, just do what I said. And sometimes he was like that. And uh, so I drove to his shop, and, and uh, I said, what, what's up? And he said, we've been to Atlanta, me and Ty, and we told Napa we wanted to go cup racing. And we wanted them as a sponsor and you as a driver. And they said they would think about it. <laughs> That's all he gets. I don't have to just sit over here with all of them, think about it. I just kept, I, I, I just know for me, I just kept thinking this would be unbelievable. This would be the best fairy tale story ever. Dale's gonna look like a hero for giving Michael the chance. Hindsight and, is so 2020. And Michael's gonna, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't even know how to say it. Like, You'll just look back on your life and be like, damn, that felt like it happened yesterday, but it, it was really like some years ago and time yeah. just flew. Like I've I, done I that can so only, much recently. I can only imagine what like Michael Watcher feels like reminiscing on like this whole story because essentially it's his whole life. Yeah. This story is his whole life and where like as bad as it sounds, you can compress like his life into an hour and 40 minute like story but and that story is going to live on forever yeah and that story is an amazing one exactly it's, it's, it's an important one I fucking love this movie i love it <laughs> get the dark cloud off his back and then dale called and said let's do this Napa's in. We're going racing. Here we go. Well, my mom's going to be really embarrassed. I told her I got a ride with Earnhardt. I just didn't tell her I had to drive that truck, and they won't even turn the hat around. <laughs> Dale said I only had to drive that truck until until I won one, one of those races on Sunday afternoon. So When this thing happened and I called him, the Tyne Arse and I called him. He said, You're, are you sure now? I mean, you know, we talked about this, nothing ever happened, but this is going to be a great race team right here. I think we're going to be a winner before long, and the excitement of it is really good. But there were a lot of naysayers. I mean, people come up to us all the time and say, man, if you were going to have that ride, why didn't you talk to me? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I just said, this is what Dale wanted. By that point, Dad had said several times, hey, I think the guy can do it. I don't think this is crazy. In my mind, we're building what is going to be mm -hmm. the biggest and greatest and most competitive mm -hmm. racing team in NASCAR. That's our vision, right? And, you know, you're looking at Michael's record and, and then you're thinking, hmm. I think how lucky I am to be a NASCAR Winston Cup driver and how fortunate I am to have a great sponsor like Napa Auto Parts. The very first commercial Napa made, it was the first part of 
Michael making fun of himself in a national commercial. And it's at times like this, looking around at the empty grandstands and listening to the silence of pit road that I realize I'm at the wrong track. It <laughs> 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 was a huge hit amongst the fans. They loved That's it. funny. Everyone that was, was funny. Like, you got the right track? These commercials were great. That, that was good. Him in the national limelight, it brought what was a natural personality for Michael. It tied him in to Dale Earnhardt. Dad had been on the racetrack with Michael for all these years. He had seen Michael run every, you know, all of these laps, he physically been behind him on the racetrack and watched him go through countless corners. So if anyone could judge and be the decision maker on whether Michael belonged in there or not, it had, it had to come from that a driver that had experienced that track with Michael. They'd become great friends. They probably had a million conversations about this. You know, Dad probably told him, look, man, you're going to have to buckle down. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to be marketable and do all the things off the track that we need to do, which Michael was e excellent at. Whatever needs to happen, <laughs> Michael does dance it. dance moves are top tier. You know, being teammates is about more than just helping each other win races every week. It's also about helping each other learn. That's right. Michael has taught me that Napa Parts professionals can always help you get the job done right the first time. Yeah, and Junior taught me how to do this. <laughs> I'm, not I'm just going to say it's bad when a movie in 20... 2019 so says, hey man, when this, this came out yeah could only yeah. find the commercial like, that was 360p okay. yeah. Dale believes it's like they took the youtube video <laughs> and dale loved to put that big arm around you and say i told you so that was his he loved that all the people you could chosen and driven that car and, and and you chose michael and dale like put that big arm around people and said i told you so i told you he could get the job done It was I love you, it's a good feeling, though. We did it all together. Who's going to be the crew chief? I don't know. Eggleston's smart. He does a good job. Let's get him. Deal. Who's the spotter? I like my spotter I had a couple years ago. You want to keep him? Sure. Who's going to do PR? That'll be up to Napa. They got someone named Brooke. She seems kind of tough. When I was assigned to Michael, I wasn't happy. I didn't like the things that I had heard about him. Damn. I didn't like how cocky he was with the media. He just, he knew he was pretty savvy. He certainly didn't need a publicist to tell him what to do and when to do it. I'd had some interesting conversations with PR people trying to explain why I didn't win again. And <laughs> I think I kind of got sideways with most of them. There was no hiding Michael's wins versus losses. It was O and 462, and it was talked about regularly. He just had this guarded, defensive um, aura when you went down that path. And I think that's because truly he knew he was a winner. He was getting his shot of a lifetime. And why did we have to go and focus on Oh, and 462. It was a True. new opportunity for me, and I felt like I needed to have a new attitude, and I needed to, to, to make sure I respected every part and piece of it, of that chance. And so I gave her the benefit of the doubt, and off we went. This being the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year, would you rather it be later on in the season? Oh no, this is the perfect way to kick off a, 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 a great season for us. We have a couple of months to build new cars and prepare for this race. So when we come to Daytona, we're as, we're as prepared as we're gonna be all year long. We're fresh and we got our new stuff and we're ready to roll. Daytona is our Super Bowl. If you just win one, it's still a big, big deal. If you don't win any race in your whole career, if you win Daytona, uh, you're a winner, okay, and that's the way everybody looks at it. Trevor Bain. Welcome to day. I love the way he talks. I don't know why. <laughs> Something about how he talks enters me. It's soothing. Sick. It's really soothing. That's the word. Yes. Yep. yep. But I think we're gonna end this video here, guys. Um.
anything you would like to say, Kyle? You've been kind of kind of quiet throughout I, this video. I, I've bit. been enjoying it, man. It's it tells a really good story. I hope I hope you've been learning a lot. I've been learning so much from the comments from you. Literally everyone. Like this community is so welcoming. It's insane. Like I was not expecting any of this when I first posted my first NASCAR reaction. I didn't expect any of it at all. But yeah, you be you be surprised, man. I'm happy for it. And it's dope. I'm learning something new. I like learning new things. So, I'm well, I'm, I'm here for it. So, appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall. I got always down bad. I was stuck in the mud. That nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.